Hey everyone, Heartless here. Uh, not bringing you guys a StarCraft match today. I'm actually going to be showing you a little bit something on my printer. This is something that I've been uh, promised to show uh, some people on the Folger Tech Facebook group. Uh, something that I did. And that is using a 12 inch silicone pad. I don't know if you can really see it's that red thing right there. Let me see if I can get a better coloring. There you go. So this red silicone pad along with the MOSFET controller which is right in there if you see that there and so I uh, <laughs> this isn't a tutorial or anything this is just showing you my setup I know a lot of people have actually printed a uh, MOSFET um, holder piece that actually mounts to right around in here I decided to go ahead and mount mine inside the electronics case because I don't even have it enclosed anyway so I just figured to put all my electronics in one spot. Uh, I don't know if there's any other better place to actually put it. Anyway, I was going to show you what I have. So what I was going to do is I was going to go ahead and disassemble part of this so you guys can see this. I have two of the large binder clips on my print bed holding it down to the original build plate. And those are going to actually go eventually go away because I'm going to end up printing um, some panel, sorry, some holders, so it will go underneath this, and then kind of come up on each side, and then mount on top of this. My current build setup right now, if you can see it, is the original bed has been desoldered, and I'm still using that so I can do the finute um, leveling because I don't have the uh, the BL touch yet, so I'm still using this. After I get the Beal Touch, I still might actually use them. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, uh, what I have, so you guys can see this. Hopefully, you know what? Let me close my window here so the color balancing isn't so off. Sorry, guys. There we go. That should be a lot better. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Okay, so what I have right now is I have a sheet of 12 inch by 12 inch aluminum with a sheet of PEI on top underneath that if I can pull it up <laughs> it looks like the uh, the silicone pad is actually staying to the aluminum alright so anyway let's see if I can get that to come up just a little bit there we go so there's the heating pad right there and then I have two pieces of 12 inch by 12 inch cork so here's the first one and the second one right underneath it. So here's number one. And here's number two down here. And the reason I have two is because I went ahead and on the top one, I dug out a little channel. Um, I just used a, uh, an X-Acto knife and just kind of cut a piece out of it. Because underneath this silicone bed is where all the wiring for the thermistor and everything goes. Oops, sorry. There we go. You can see that underneath there. So I just dug a little channel out. That way it has a place to sit. And then that way the pad itself sits flush and there's no bowing or anything like that. So that's how I have the bed set up. It's just a couple pieces of 12, uh, 12 by 12 cork, the silicone pad, and then the 12, uh, 12 inch by 12 inch aluminum with the 12 inch by 12 inch PEI sheet. Anyway, I have that plugged in all the way through my snake cable and into the MOSFET controller here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here so you can see it. Now, the MOSFET controller, this is the power in. Are these two plugs here and here? Whoop, if I can get that out of the way. The first two plugs on the left are the, uh, the power in and then uh, the ground. And then the other two, these these ones over here on the right, they're the ones that actually go to the bed. Anyway, uh, have the fan itself set up to go into these. This is actually the configuration that Shane Fuga, or was it Jeremy Parker? I think it was Shane Fuga, posted on the Facebook page a little bit ago. Um, you should be able to find it on there. If not, just message him, and I'm sure he'll get it to you. And then down here on the bottom are the power in and the power outs that run to the MKS controller over here. Pretty basic setup. It's not really much um, to actually do. I got everything installed in oh, about a day. It would have actually been faster if I had all the different pieces. 
because uh, I didn't have the cork and everything beforehand, and I also didn't have the screws. What I decided to do to mount this, um, wow, I was angling way down here. I don't know why I was showing you guys my horrible wiring. Um, for mounting, I, like I said, I didn't mount it up here. I went ahead and mounted it against the side of this, and I just used a couple screws um, that I found at Lowe's, self-tapping screws to go into the melamine, and just hold it in from there. So anyway, it's, like I said, it's not the most elegant. There's way more elegant ways to do it. This is just the way I did it. And like I said, it's not the most beautiful setup. I'm actually going to end up rewiring this without the snake cables. Sorry, without the, the cable chains. These cable chains actually drive me nuts. And I can't wait to get rid of them. So anyway, <clears throat> that's that. Is there anything else about this? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yes, yes. The power that's coming in to this controller comes directly from the power supply. It's just the stock 12 volt power supply. However, you can blow your fuse on it. Um, I blew my fuse the very first time I tried it. It was about five minutes in to a print, maybe, and the fuse blew and the whole thing stopped. And it took me a minute to figure out what it was. Turns out it was a blown fuse, and that's because I hadn't done any PID auto tuning. After I did the PID auto-tuning, um, if you don't know how to do that, do a search for Thomas. I think his last name is Sunlauder. Sunlauderer? I, I have no idea the actual pronunciation of it. Anyway, he's brilliant, and he does a video on how to do PID auto-tuning. That way, um, you're not drawing too much power all at once from the, uh, from the board. Sorry, from the power supply. And uh, great, after I did that... It worked just one. Haven't actually blown out the second fuse that came with it. I got a few backup fuses that were five amps instead of the standard three that come with the um, with the printer. Anyway, um, went ahead and did that. Let's see anything else about this. This is specifically for my heating bed and the MOSFET controller. For those of you who I promised to do this for, I guess I'll uh, go ahead and show you one of the things that I'm currently doing is how I'm personally enclosing the FT5. And that's using, oh, there we go, sorry about that. That's using these little things that I made. So these are just little acrylic panel holders. What they'll do is they'll sit against the 2020 extrusion like this, put an M5 screw in there, hold it on down, and then you'll see that, if I can get a good picture of it, you'll see that the acrylic can sit flush inside the extrusion. And then, um... Mount, like I said, uh, it's for acrylic, so what I'll do is I'll drill a hole in the acrylic and then mount this directly onto it and then I'll hold it in place. However, eight of the screws are, a, they have a little bit of a different way of going on because as you can see down here, this extrusion, if you put a standard mounter on there, it's not going to work because it's not long enough. So what I went ahead and did is I went ahead and printed one that has an extended length. As you can see here, let me do this. There we go. You can see that one is definitely longer than the other. That's to adjust for the length of the melamine here because I what I'm going to do is end up doing two panel holders on every single piece of extrusion that is holding a panel in. And this one and this one, that's two and then three, and then four, they have to have a longer um, edge in order to accommodate the length of that melamine, which is seven millimeters. So I had to print off a couple of those. I have eight of the ones that have the, ex uh, the extended length and 48, which I think I actually only need 46, but I have a couple extra in case some of them break. Um, printed them all out. <laughs> it was long, it took two and a half hours for, or was it three? No, two and a half hours for every batch of six. That sucked. <laughs> it took forever. So anyway, that's what I'm currently doing. And then I ended up uh, getting only M5 by 10s, which M5 by 10s don't actually have enough length to go through the holder itself and the acrylic, <laughs> which sucks. I wish I had ordered like M5 by 12s or 14s because now I'm gonna have to use my Dremel tool and bore out a little bit of a recession in the acrylic where I'm going to actually put the screws. Anyway, 
that's that. So yeah, um, let's see, anything else about this? That was just something I was mentioning because I'm a little bit bored right now, I guess. Eh, not really bored. Anyway, just thought I'd bring it up. Anyway, that's the uh, silicone heated pad. This heated pad, as of this recording, this is the day after Christmas 2016. This is a, tw uh, let's see, 260 watt 12 volt silicone pad, right? Let me think here. Yeah, 12 volt 260 watt, or was it 280? 280 watt, 280 watt silicone pad. It was made by something I can't remember. I'll post the link in the uh, in the comments down below. But right now it is out of stock, so you'll have to wait for that if you do want to get it. However, the MOSFET controller is in stock at the moment right now, so you can go ahead and pick that up if you desire to. Um, like I said, this isn't a tutorial. This is just how I did it. The wiring scheme, uh, like I said, it can be found uh, from Shane. Um, I'm trying to think here. Where did I see that? I don't remember the actual picture itself. Uh, all the details of it. I just remember that he posted it and had the wiring diagram mostly for the positives and negatives right because over here the far left is negative the one that is second to the left is positive and then which one was positive and negative over here on the bottom this was the big one because I actually had them reversed when I originally set it up so it wasn't working I fixed it up and it worked just fine but positive and negative does matter leading from the MKS board into the MOSFET. Now the reason I say that, <clears throat> the reason I bring this up is because my original thought processes were when I originally installed just the original board it didn't matter positive negative coming out of the out of the MKS board because they both went directly to the uh, the PCB here and it didn't matter what positive negative was. It doesn't matter what order they come out of the MOSFET to the uh, to the silicone pad so these two over here but it does matter positive negative from the MOSFET coming from the MKS board over here so that does matter anyway uh, just a couple things that I came across as I was installing this like I said there's many different ways of installing the MOSFET it's awesome uh, yeah you can do a solid state relay but that requires you powering it directly um, from the power supply and I'm not a huge fan of that I would much rather it be powered through the MKS board which drives everything um, so yeah that's why I decided to go with the MOSFET that way everything is controlled through here so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this um, any questions comments of course leave them down below hope you guys enjoyed this I'll see you guys next time peace out